Great, so I'm gonna get started. And I apologize in advance, we're now half an hour late on the schedule and um, I have a half an hour to go. So uh, I'll try to keep it to exactly 30 minutes, but for the next speaker, I think we're just gonna have to run late here. So I'm Nelson Miner and I'm here to talk to you about TopoJSON. Uh, and I wanna start by giving a big credit here to Mike Bostock. I'm actually really, TopoJSON's his work. I'm a user of it, I'm a big fan, but uh, I was excited enough I wanted to try to talk about it here. But pretty much most of what you're seeing is from the mind of Mike Bostock. He helped me prepare the talk a little bit as well. So a quick introduction. So TopoJSON's a text format for geographic data. It's essentially an extension of GeoJSON. Um, it adds a new type called topology. The key thing about a TopoJSON file is it encodes the topology of, of a bunch of geographic data, not just the geometry. So it's able to identify shared arcs, shared boundaries, and adjacent polygons and glue them together. Uh, one really nice thing about TopoJSON is it's quite space efficient. Also, because you have the topology available, you could do topology-aware visualizations, and it's particularly good at browser presentation. So just a quick comparison, here's a map of the US in GeoJSON. And there's map of the US and TopoJSON. Uh, not terribly exciting, right? So visually they're identical, um, and that's on purpose. I prepared the sample that way. But that TopoJSON file that, that draws that is about half the size, 43%. And with pretty much most of the comparisons I'm showing, the size savings continues even after you gzip. So it's, it's sort of, it's compressing at a, at a deeper level, at a more of a semantic level. Uh, here's another sample of a TopoJSON. This is all the counties in the United States. And to highlight TopoJSON, we're putting a little dot at every intersection between a county boundary. So what to, this graph is sort of the, the concept of TopoJSON, which is that it's encoding the arcs. It's encoding the boundaries between counties. And then later it's saying, well, counties are polygons that come from these arcs. But just by highlighting the shared arcs, I just wanted to show kind of conceptually what's going on. Uh, like I said, there's some other folks whose work uh, is heavily I'm presenting here, Mike Bostock. Also, he works a lot with Jason Davies and Sean Carter. They're both contributors to TopoJSON. Uh, some of the, many of the examples I'm showing here are their maps. So let me jump right into the definition of TopoJSON. Um, I started with, um, I'm, I'm gonna skip over this. I, I had an introduction to GeoJSON. I'm gonna assume people here are relatively comfortable with that. Let me just highlight some things about GeoJSON. Uh, I love this quote from Sean Gillies. He just gave this talk. Uh, it's spectacularly wrong, and yet GeoJSON is somehow right enough. Uh, I love formats like this that have problems, but basically they're useful. Um, so the good things about GeoJSON, it's a simple text format. Shapes are described as a sequence of points. So you just lay out lat-long coordinates, and you make your shape. Um, there's a lot of great tools around GeoJSON. It's easy to export it from pretty much any GIS. Uh, it's easy to draw GeoJSON on the web using something like Leaflet or D3. The, one of the big bummers about GeoJSON is it's just not very space efficient. It doesn't even try to be. And I love this example. If you use most converter tools with their default settings, they produce these coordinates to like 14 degrees of precision. And that's something like on the scale of femtometers or something. It, it's ridiculous. Even if you're careful and you round your coordinates to a reasonable precision, still the GeoJSON files are quite bloated. So let me jump on into TopoJSON. So I mentioned before, TopoJSON is an extension of GeoJSON. It actually defines a new GeoJSON geometry type, and it's the type topology. A topology itself contains three things. It contains a list of objects, and the objects can t are your typical geographic things. They're line strings, polygons, uh, points not so much because it's not very interesting. Um, but objects are then defined not as a sequence of points, but rather as a sequence of arcs and arcs are listed by reference in objects. And objects can have properties attached to the metadata like the name of a, of a polygon or something. In addition, so now we've defined the arcs in terms of references to these arcs themselves. The arcs are encoded separately as line strings. And the key thing is if you have a shared boundary, you only need the arc once, even if multiple polygons are using it. Uh, and finally, there's a transform that's applied to every topojson object where we scale and translate it to the right place on the globe. Key concept here, shapes are sequences of arcs, and arcs are sequences of points. So it's one level of indirection compared to GeoJSON. So we're gonna take a quick trip over to Null Island and draw a very simple um, set of geographic data. I just wanna show how TopoJSON actually works. We have two rectangles, one of them cleverly at zero latitude, zero longitude, and they're I think one degree uh, wide and two degrees tall. Here's the GeoJSON file for this very simple geographic data. 
Um, the key things in here are that there's a polygon and it's got five coordinates, which defines the box, and the polygon's named left and a similar one to the right. So that's the GeoJSON. Here's the TopoJSON for it. I'm gonna go through this in a couple of levels of detail. At the start, if you just look, it looks a little bit like a GeoJSON stuff. It's like a big barf of square brackets and angle brackets and all that. There's a transform at top. Now, this example has a null, or rather an identity transform. I sort of set it up that way. Uh, so we can ignore that for the moment. Then there's two objects. They're both polygons. They're defined as a list of, in this case, two arcs, and they have their names. And then at the bottom, we have the actual arc definitions. So that's the complete topo JSON file for this very simple shape, or two shapes. Uh, here's the definition of the arc. So I showed that there were these two rectangles. There's the left one and the right one. The left rectangle is defined as the union of arc zero and arc one. So if we put those two arcs together, we're gonna get our rectangle back. The right rectangle is defined as the union of arc two and arc minus one. Well, what does a minus mean in this case? What, this is a little bit of a weirdness, but a minus sign indicates that we're taking the arc and we're running it backwards. So we're gonna go from the, the end of the arc and go forward the other way around. It's like going clockwise versus counterclockwise around a polygon. And it's minus one because it's actually offset by one so that arc zero is also arc minus one. Arc one is also arc minus two. Uh, and that's just to distinguish zero from minus zero. So it's a little weirdness, but you can kind of forget about it. The key thing is the shared arcs are encoded separately. Each arc is then encoded with an integer delta encoding of the arc shape. And I'm gonna show you how that works in a second and then the scale and the translate will be relevant. So here's a picture of how TopoJSON is drawn. So I've taken that same shape, drawn the left and blue, the red and black, uh, sorry, the right and red, and then the shared geometry, that one shared boundary is in black. So arc zero, in fact, is the shared one um, and the black one. And if you look at the very first arc in the arcs array, what it's saying is we're gonna start at the geographic coordinates one comma two and then we're gonna move down two degrees, and that's gonna be our boundary. Similarly, the blue rectangle that's sort of a C shape on the left, we're gonna start at one zero, we're gonna to move to the left, we're gonna move up, and we're gonna move back to the right. So to draw the entire rectangle, we draw this arc, and we draw this arc, and we stick them together, and we have the rectangle. Similarly, the right rectangle is encoded with that one shared one again, but then now the right. So that's all there is in TopoJSON. That's the entire data format. Um, and I put it up here. You never really need to think about this because the tools take care of it, but it's pretty simple and pretty approachable. Uh, here's a, a more realistic example of a topology. This is, I took the, the reflecting pool in Washington, D.C. out of OpenStreetMap uh, and translated it to TopoJSON. Um, so first of all, we have a real transform now. So the arcs are defined where it's drawing the reflecting pool in a square from 0, 0 to 100, 100. So the scale is kind of warping that into the, topo, into the actual reflecting pool so, shape. Uh, here's a picture of it, it's the blue rectangle. Um, so we're kind, of, we're kind of warping it, and then we're translating the whole thing to this latitude and longitude to drop it on Washington, D.C. So that's what the transform's for. There's only a single arc in this case, it's just the outline of it. And I won't go through it in detail, but you, you can see the drawing commands are kind of start here, go up, go way to the left, do a little jog around the outside, and then go back to the right. So that draws the reflecting pool. So like I said, you don't really need to understand how this topo JSON stuff is produced, uh, or rather how the files are formatted because there's a tool that produces it. This is an overview of the algorithm that tool is using to make the production, um, to make the file. What it does is it starts with your input geometry in whatever format it's in, and it quantizes the points. It actually rounds down the coordinates to fit it into a grid, typically a 10,000 by 10,000 grid quantizes the points, it then drops them on the grid, it now draws every line in your, your input geometry on that grid. Now we've got the whole geometry drawn in this quantized way, and then we can pick off the common arcs, and because they've been quantized, it's a little easier to identify things that are common. If points are very close to each other, they'll end up now coinciding. Pick out the common arcs, uh, possibly simplify them, uh, which is something I'll show you examples of in a minute. Then we encode them in this integer encoding, we encode the geometries by reference to the arcs, and we write out the file. It's actually a pretty simple idea conceptually. The thing that makes this a little hard is that it's designed to handle you know, large inputs, hundreds of megabytes of input geometry. So you have to be a little careful about data structures and algorithms to make it not blow up. I also want to highlight, it's a global algorithm. It's, there's no really easy way to partition this and sort of break it up into many pieces. So the way the current TopoJSON tool works is it loads it all into RAM and does its thing. Um, so that's a limitation. 
So a key concept in TopoJSON is that the geometry, the input geometry is usually downsampled. It doesn't actually have to be. You can sort of say you use infinite precision, but typically TopoJSON is being used for a screen presentation or print presentation where it makes sense. So there's two kinds of downsampling. The first I mentioned already is the points are quantized. So we drop their precision. We stick them in this 10,000 by 10,000 grid. It works out to be a lot like rounding off GeoJSON to the nearest three digits to the nearest five digits. It's a little smarter than that. Also, there's simplification, and this is the topological simplification algorithm like ST Simplify in uh, PostGIS or something, where it'll take a line and it'll remove points that don't really change the shape of the line much. And you can often drop you know, half to 90% of the points and have something that looks the same. Uh, and TopoJSON has simplification built in. The cool thing is because TopoJSON has the topology available, it's a smart simplification. It's a topology-preserving simplification. So that's a lot of words. Let me show you some pictures. Here's quantization in action. So this is the default map of the US quantized to 10,000 points. I apologize for the Mercator projection, but it makes uh, horizontal lines nice. So it'll be easier to see what's going on. So if I drop it and I say only quantized to 2,500 points, it still looks all right. And that's because the screen is only 1,000 pixels wide. You're not really going to see a difference. We drop down to 1,000 points, you start seeing some distortion. 750 points, 500, now it's looking a little funky. 250, whoa, that's kind of weird. 100, barely recognizable, 50, and at 10 points it actually just blows up. So let me run through that like as a quick little animation. Just da, 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 da. So uh, that's, the, that's quantization in action. Uh, let me also show the simplification. Here's a, a zoom in on that US map, and this is unsimplified. This is kind of the default with the boundaries having a fair amount of detail. This is what the topojson simplification looks like. So you can see we've just sort of you know, made the border simpler. It's very good. But the key thing is that, except for one little weird little bug here, the geometry, the topology has been preserved. This is what happens if you don't preserve the topology. So this is the same simplification, but now without topology preserving. And you see there's now holes in our shapes. There's like a gap between three states. You don't ever, ever want that when you're drawing a map. So topology preservation actually turns out to be really useful. The cool thing about TopoJSON is be because it has the topology in the algorithm, it's very easy for it to preserve the topology. It just simplifies each line segment, each shared boundary. Uh, it's a nice trick. So that's an overview of the theory of TopoJSON. Let me talk a little bit about it in practice. Um, so here's where it's best in application, I think, or where it's being used at the most right now is browser delivery. It's that you have some complicated map, you want to deliver it to the user, you know their screen's at most 1,200 pixels wide, you want a smaller file. Uh, there's a lot of good uses for that, but also it allows a bunch of interesting topology-aware visualizations. I, I think it's best as a presentation format, not an archival format, um, because of the downsampling, but you can, you can work around that if you need to. So first of all, let me talk a little bit about smaller sizes. This is a chart of me throwing a bunch of data sets at TopoJSON. Uh, so for instance, the top line is the Metro XDAX from Mike McGursky of the OpenStreetMap San Francisco lines. So it's basically the road network. Source file 79 megs, the GeoJSON's 84, the TopoJSON's 69 megs. It's about 83% the size. Uh, that's not great, but it's a little bit of a savings. But the line segments are kind of the worst examples, and typically, because there's no shared boundaries in a road network. If you look down at the polygons, you get 75%. Uh, another city from OpenStreetMap, Chongqing, is 61%. Then a, a completely different data set, looking at the NHD, the, the hydrographic data set, uh, that again has no shared boundaries. It's just a bunch of rivers, but that compresses down to about 31% the size. And then like zip codes, which have some shared boundaries, goes to 39%. So uh, values vary. I also have the values after gzip there, but let's skip over that. Here's another example. This is a vector rendered map of San Francisco using OpenStreetMap. Uh, it's got 30 tiles in it from four different layers, um, OpenStreetMap layers and NHD rivers. Here's the sizes. So it's almost 10 megs of GeoJSON. Gets down to six and a half megs TopoJSON. So it's about two thirds the size. It's an improvement. Uh, interestingly, if you throw all the properties out, all the metadata, then TopoJSON does a lot better because it's not really encoding those in a smart way. So if you throw the stuff it's not good at out, then it does better. So if you're not look, worried about property encoding, we get about half the size. Another example, I got really excited by Dane Springmeyer's talk about what Mapbox is doing with vector tiles. So he spent some time with me um, trying to do some comparisons there. So here's a map at z equals 14 of San Francisco. Uh, and we looked at the size of the data for doing this. The GeoJSON's 850K, the TopoJSON's 360K, 
the, their format, the protocol buffer format from Mapbox actually is bigger, it's a, it's a meg. But hold on, that's not a fair comparison. That, their data file has way more layers in it. It's got a lot more data in it. Uh, we tried to do a fair comparison, um, and the, both the Z12 and the Z14 are a little bit more fair. And in those cases, the, their protocol format does look a little smaller than TopoJSON. Uh, the details of this are gonna vary depending on exactly what, your, what kind of data you have. Uh, I'm confident in saying the TopoJSON is smaller than GeoJSON, and the protocol buffer should probably be smaller in most cases for the same data. And thanks to Dane, he spent about a half an hour with me just sort of quickly cooking up some data, so that was fun. Uh, moving on, I want to talk a little bit about top topologically aware rendering. So here we have a map of the United States again with counties and states, but I've drawn the, bound the borders between states in red and the borders between counties in blue. This is uh, traditionally a little bit awkward to do with sort of naive polygon data formats. Like you can try to overdraw, like you draw the states on top of the, the county lines and you hope nobody notices. In this case, what we're doing is we have a single topojson file which contains all of that data, states, counties, and the, the landmass. And there's a lot of shared boundaries now, right? Like every state boundary is also a county boundary. Uh, so in this case, the source data file in GeoJSON is, uh, is about four times as big as the TopoJSON. Um, and because you've shipped this topological data, it becomes very easy to render the internal boundaries. This is the, the JavaScript code that's actually doing the, the shared boundary rendering. And the key thing is that filter function, function A comma B. What that's saying is show me every boundary, every line, where the object on either side of the line is different, but they are the, from the same state. Uh, and so the thing there is those become county boundaries, right? It's like two things that are different but are in the same state. Well, now I know that's a county boundary. So I can use that and the output of the mesh function and say draw that in blue and similarly do that for states in the landmass. So that's an example of using the topology. Uh, another example where topology comes useful in visualization is when you, when you have access to the adjacency of polygons so you know what's next to what because that's right in the data structure you get from TopoJSON. So there's a visualization technique called a Dorling cartogram where you'll take a map of the world but substitute the shapes of the countries. You'll substitute just simple circles but you want to keep them in the same place. So I have a quick little demo of that. This is from Jason Davies. We'll start as a little animation. So you can see as it relaxes, it kind of jostles around in a force-directed layout trying to, trying to find its, its minimum. But the key thing here is that the, bound, the, the adjacency of countries has stayed the same, like the United States stays next to Canada and that kind of thing. And that's because the underlying force-directed layout here has access to the adjacency of countries and it's, it's saying preserve this constraint. Uh, so that's something that is pretty easy to do with a topojson file because you've got that data right on your hands. So that's a little bit about applications of topojson. Two key concepts. It's a nice small format, and then because you have the topology data available, you can do some cool things with it. So let me then move on to um, the tools of topojson. Uh, just to give you a quick overview of how to use it, there's a primary topojson GitHub project. That's if you search for topojson, you're going to end up there. That's where most of the code is these days. There's some command line tools, there's a browser API, there's a wiki with some good docs in it. Uh, here's what it looks like to encode a file. So I'm taking the awesome shapefile extract and I'm saying encode it in TopoJSON and give it this ID and preserve a property and blah, blah, blah. Um, and what you get is this nice output where it's telling me, okay, I've quantized it and you've introduced four meters of error. I've, I've removed half the points in the simplification step and I didn't prune any geometry, I kept everything. So that's what the encoder looks like. Uh, the encoder takes as input pretty much uh, a variety of, ge of geo inputs, GeoJSON, shape files, can use CSV files weirdly. Um, inputs should be topologically valid, don't give it something all weird and twisted. Uh, it works well with giant files, it's designed to do that, and by giant I mean more than the 100 megs. But, um, but it's a little awkward, it's a little tricky. You want to make sure that uh, it's better to use a shape file than a GeoJSON input because the, the way Node works, it's easier to stream a shape file than to load the whole thing in RAM. There's a magic flag to node, which says allow node.js to use more RAM. You often need to use that flag. Um, and just sort of timings, it, it, taking 130 megabyte input file, it took about 45 seconds to convert. Uh, the zip code database took about two and a half minutes, although the second time I ran it, it didn't work. So I don't know what that meant. But you know, it takes a minute or three to convert. It's not a lot of time. Uh, uh, just really quickly, the metadata properties are stripped by default in TopoJSON, so you need to add a dash P flag to tell it which properties you want to use. Um, the quantization, by default, it's this 10,000 grid. You really want to think about 
how to set that parameter in terms of pixels. So if you're thinking of a 1,000 pixel wide map, then you know, really a 2,000 by 2,000 grid is probably good enough, maybe 4,000 square. 10,000 is a good default. But if you're building a map where you're going to be zooming into that data a lot, you need to think about this more carefully. You want to think in terms of pixels on the screen when you set that parameter. Uh, simplification you can do in, in a couple of ways. There's spherical simplification in geographic space where you tell it preserve this area or throw out 90% of the points and it'll do the right thing. You can also do simplification in Cartesian space where you've already projected your geometry and then say, you know, make this look good at this width and height and the tool is smart enough to sort of set the parameters accordingly. Um, and then finally, uh, last couple of things here. When you want to serve topo.json files, you want to serve it via HTTP typically to a browser. Here's some tricks about doing it. It's basically like GeoJSON. Treat it the same way, it'll be fine. There's no special MIME type, it's just JSON. Um, make sure you compress the file. GZIP encoding is important. Uh, so make sure your web server is GZIP encoding stuff. Please put a cache header on it so the browser can cache it for at least a few minutes. Uh, also, if you guys don't know what cores is, access control allow origin, that's the magic that says other web apps are allowed to use my data. It allows a third party JavaScript program to load your topo.json data and do something with it. Unless your maps are private, you probably want to set that header just to allow reuse. Um, and then I, I have a habit of using naming my files something .topo.json uh, so I can keep track of them on my file system. That actually screws up a lot of web servers that are not aware of that extension, like GitHub looks at that and doesn't know what to do with it. So it's probably safer to call them just .json um, or reconfigure your web server. Uh, there's also included in the project, there's this JavaScript client API. This is the thing that when you load the JSON file into, into the browser, what do you do with it? There's three important methods. The top method is extract this object from the topology and give it to me as a GeoJSON blob. And then you can pass that on to leaflet or D3 or some GeoJSON aware JavaScript code. Uh, there's this mesh method I showed earlier. That's the thing that takes um, a filter and then gives you a multi-line string, which is all the boundaries that match that filter. And then there's this neighbors method, which gives you access to the adjacency matrix. Uh, there are some other tools other than Mike's sort of GitHub project. Uh, Sean Gillies wrote a Python decoder. Um, there's a thing called the distillery from Sean Carter, which is a little web app where you upload uh, a GeoJSON file and then you have an interactive tool to simplify it and produce TopoJSON. Josh Livney also has something like that that's called Shape Escape, where you upload shape files and can download stuff. Um, Mike Bostock has a fun little project called US Atlas, which is a, basically a make file, and it makes a bunch of topo JSON files for things like US counties, US census boundaries, zip codes. Um, two things that are missing at the moment, I'd love to get a Python encoder, something that emits topo JSON and Python, because then you can plug that right into Tilestash and easily use it for vector tile generation, like on the OSM servers. Uh, and then also, you know, the holy grail of any geo stuff, if there was Google Ogre support, it would be really easy to then plug this into all sorts of tools. Uh, so that's it. So TopoJSON, it's an efficient wire format. It's pretty easy to use, particularly when you want to simplify and quantize your data. Um, and it's open source. It's got lots of examples. So got a couple of minutes for questions. People have any? How yes, please. How, how does it handle tiles is the question. And the answer is, I think, not at all at the moment. There has been no effort to tile. Um, I could, the simple way would be just to produce a TopoJSON file to the tile boundaries and maybe make it a little bit wider so that the artifacts at the borders kind of get covered up. But I haven't really thought about that too carefully. Any other questions? Okay. Uh, binary encoding, yeah, that's actually why I spent some time with Dane on, on trying to do the, the vector tile, uh, their, their protocol buffer format, because it's a binary format. Um, and my impression is, if you're assuming you're going to gzip afterwards, you don't get a huge Im you don't get a huge improvement. If you don't gzip, then it's a problem. But the biggest issue with GeoJSON being so big is that those floating point numbers don't gzip really well because they're pretty random. But because TopoJSON does this delta encoding, mostly what a TopoJSON string looks like is a bunch of one comma zero, one comma zero, zero comma two. It's very repetitive numbers, and then the gzip encoder is pretty good at compressing that out. I'm sure a binary format would be a little better, but my intuition is like 5% better, not a lot better. Yes? Have you looked at actually a, a TopoJSON uh, protobuf? A TopoJSON protobuf. I haven't looked at that at all. I don't know. Um, it, the, so one thing is, the again, looking at what the Mapbox guys have done, they, um, 
they've done protocol buffer formats for GeoJSON or geographic data. They're also doing that same delta encoding with integers or a similar encoding. So I would assume the experience is going to be this similar, but I, I don't know. I haven't tried it. Yes? So, so the question is, what is the performance hit of, re, of converting TopoJSON back to GeoJSON on the client, like in the browser? Uh, and is there like native code to do that better or something? The answer is I don't know. Um, it's a fairly simple uh, decoding process. It's not computationally intensive, but it, you're now copying all the data again, so it's not free. Um, the advantage is you're sending a lot less data over the wire, so it's less bandwidth. Uh, I'm not aware of any native client libraries of any sort to do this kind of stuff now. Um, Current um, TopoJSON is new enough that the main thing is like, hey, we can convert it to GeoJSON and then use those tools. But presumably, you could have a TopoJSON native renderer uh, and it would probably render pretty quickly. Great. Well, thank you all very much. <laughs>